last time on Banshee Hunters. Trees crashing off to the north. And tree forts that are unexplainable, and we've heard the Banshee officially. So I'm James Douglas. And I'm Kurt Ruffalo. And together we are the Banshee Hunters. Banshees are creatures that only exist in myths. Well, think again, because they're out there. They dwell at night, and we track them during the day. That is why we are Banshee Hunters. So, last time we filmed here, all of a sudden, out of pitch nowhere, um, this hunter comes out of the woods and I flip out. Oh my! I'm scared. We were talking about seeing a banshee or something, but because we thought we were onto it, but we we were onto it and we're on the trail as we speak right now. And all of a sudden, this hunter comes out of the woods. We talked to him for a bit, and uh, yeah, so he tells us about some encounters he's had with with the banshee, and uh, so. That's what we're doing right now, is tracking it down, and today we're going to kill it. We didn't kill it last week, but we're going to find it, and we're going to kill it. We're just going to be the end of all these cow murders and all these problems, knocking down fences. No, 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 no more of that. It's the end of the Banshees. All right, so you might want to know why we're using a pistol this time. Well, uh, tell them, Jim. Well, we want to lay low, because last time when we found that hunter in the woods, um... We didn't want to accidentally shoot him or anything, so we're trying to lay low with the pistol because if you get shot with the shotgun, you're dead. If you get shot with this, you're going to have a chance of going to the hospital and live. So, you can carry that for now. Alright, you safe yeah? Alright. So what did we find last time? Well, last time... We found a lot of shacks and things that were unnatural. Things we saw a couple of wooden structures and one of those fence that we found later on with the Ooh. holes right there. Kurt, look at this. We find a bed spring. Material, more material for a banshee to possibly be using. There's a lot of stuff down here. So that's the crop field that we were um, looking at before for yeah. the fence. And as you can see, those houses back there, viewers, that's, uh, that's a bad indication of banshees getting way too close to humans. See, if a banshee gets a neighborhood, bad things happen. Yeah. All right. We're here in car door slamming. Bad news. Trying to scope out the area. Scope down down there. We'll just try this some area of woods and then we'll try to move on to there maybe. Alright. I see the crystal. Okay, so we found a lot of man-made things down here, which is kind of unusual considering we're in an area that is in a woods area. But we're trying to find a place that a banshee may have settled down or a shack that seems like something that a human would have made. And since we're so close to other people, we have to be careful with what weapons we use and how close we get to them. We are, have strict limits on how close we can get to that area, and we have strict limits on how close that banshee can get to that area. Because if the banshee gets there, potentially a lot of people could be injured or killed. Kurt, where are you? Get down here. Let me cut. Look at this. Four. So I set this down. This is not like... There's no trees that could have fallen over here. I don't see any stumps. There's no roots or anything. And this, this is the break part. This is the part that's like broken out of the ground. And there's nothing down there. Yeah, what about that? And that's assembled too. This is all assembled right here. This looks like something was down here. All right. Could be signs of uh, Since we got a good heading, um, I think it's better off. Did you find anything down there? Uh, no. no. 
So, okay, so since he didn't find anything down there, I think it's probably a better off heading that we head for the tree line near the houses. Alright, we're heading down to the woods that over there. Towards the um, residence. See okay, if we can find the bank and turn. Or the bank. If it gets any closer to the residence, we should have to worry about uh, the banshee harming someone. God. There's a trail here. People are come back here apparently. No, you know why? Because the houses are over here. So they're gonna come back here. We are in here. Look out for the uh, photo first. Out. I did not fire those for warning shots. I saw a banshee. That, what is that? I think I took it down. This black thing right there. About nine feet, right? Okay. Go check it out. I'll watch from here. Stay with the producer. Alright. Wait, I know you want to get shot, but this could be a dangerous situation. As I said last episode, this job is very highly dangerous. So when we take a banshee down, we don't want to film it or anything. We don't want to get close to it. You can film this part where he's walking out. But you can't get close to it. Especially when you're uh, just a cameraman. So, um... If you're wondering, uh, viewer, male, why we don't sh shoot the banshee with the camera, why we don't ever film a banshee, so, <coughs> two things. One is that we don't want people or the press or anything knowing about it because this animal is very endangered and out of respect for the animal, we don't want people knowing about it. We get rid of them as fast as we can. Number two is that yes these animals are hiding and stuff like that but when they're killed cops try to find some reasonable explanation because no one's gonna believe in the newspaper like Banshee kills four year old on swing set. No one's gonna believe that so they gotta come up with some murderer kills four year old on swing set. So as long as we don't catch them on film, even if it's safe now because he just he fired the final shot to finish it off. And um, so once he fires the final shot to finish it off, we still I'm not going to go over there with the camera because out of respect for the animal and because of people and newspapers watching in. So no more viewer mail for the rest of the series. Okay, people. After the deer shot the banshee, I walked over and I saw it struggling for life in the ground. It was exactly as we described, nine foot tall, and it had the fangs. Uh, but um, since it was struggling on the ground, and it's a hazard for the residents nearby, I had to kill it. We did our job, I killed the banshee, and the neighborhood is once again safe for now. We respect the animals of this territory, that's why we don't show the viewers anything. We banshee's body is burning right now in the field over there but out of respect for the animals like I said earlier we're not going to show any anything so there's your reasoning thank you for watching this episode of Banshee Hunters
tune in next time. Alright, so you can't tell the viewers why we're using a pistol this time around. Well, this. <laughs> Alright, cut it over. <laughs> You gonna film? I'm, it's filming. Oh, okay. So I walked over here after Joe shot something, and I noticed there was a large black mass about nine feet in length as described for a banshee, but what appeared to be there was not an entire banshee. Not the entire thing was here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Go. <laughs> Come on, Corey. You didn't give me enough time to get you off it. Okay. When I walked over after Joe shot the banshee, I noticed that it was laying on the ground. And, um... <laughs> oh my god, it's not even funny anymore. <laughs> it's laying on the ground. What should I say, Joe? I just... <laughs> just... Okay. When I walked over after Joe shot the banshee, I noticed that it was... Okay, when I walked over and I saw, when, after Joe shot the banshee, I walked over and I saw it straight No. After Joe shot the banshee, I walked over. <laughs> that music. Okay, uh. After I walked over it, 